Okay, so hey everyone, I'm Paulo. Uh, Daniel, hi. Uh, during this summit, we've been uh, exploring an integration uh, on our audio and video backend with LiveKit.io, which is a new WebRTC engine. Uh, and we will cover why we are doing that and what we expect uh, to do in the next coming months with it. So uh, just uh, to give a little introduction to give an, uh, uh, a clearer view on why we are doing this. Uh, this is our current media stack as of, as of uh, 3.0. Uh, we have three different components uh, as far as uh, direct media handling is concerned. So we use MediaSoup as our client facing media server. Um, and then we use FreeSwitch as our audio backend. And then we use a Python based recorder to record our stream. So three components, uh, and we are not counting the extra two or three we use for signaling and state man management. Um, so it's quite a bit complex. It has improved over uh, the last few years, but it is still not as simple and uh, reliable as we wished it would be. Um, so, um, some pieces have been here for, for a while, so free switch has been since uh, Big Button was even a thing. Uh, others are a bit more recent, like MediaSoup. Uh, and if we look at our current media stack, we have a bunch of uh, stuff to still implement. Uh, so we need to pay some attention to audio quality and reliability. We don't have any horizontal scalability. Um, we need to implement simulcasts. We don't uh, have A264 or VP9. Um, we have problems with Icelight and Firefox. We don't have Red uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so that poses a question on whether we should actually spend more time doing that or look for other alter alternatives on in the open source market. Um, and then that led us to the idea of just trying and press pressing the reset button on our media stack. Uh, it isn't uh, 2017 anymore, um, so newer solutions have been implemented. Uh, there are off-the-shelf components which actually seem to perform really well. Um, and this is the motivator to actually explore LiveKit, which seems a really promising uh, framework. So LiveKit is an open source alternative to, to Twilio and Agora, which are uh, large-scale WebRTC services. Uh, it's built upon Pion, which is a very renowned um, WebRTC framework. Um, it has a very rich ecosystem of clients and server SDKs, and its first public release is quite recent, but very fastly it has gathered a lot, a lot of attention, and you can see there in play presentation that a lot of large players are using it. And in the open source uh, ecosystem, like Matrix is the most recent adopter. So that uh, is one of the reasons we are looking into it. Uh, and for this summit, what we try to do is actually prototype in an integration of LiveKit with BBB, focusing on audio and webcams. Um, so a bit of a paradigm shift for audio, uh, full SFU audio, no free switch, uh, no mixing, etc. And for cameras, pretty much the same thing on the surface, but a completely different backend. Um, so this is an example of what we could achieve. Um, during this summit, uh, we have a demo server, which I will paste in the chat and Denimo set it up for us. Uh, it has a green light uh, front end. We, you can just access it and try it out. Um, and we we'll love to hear feedback. Um, what we actually achieved this summit uh, was a bunch of items. So live uh, packaging for LiveKit was one of them. I don't know if Danny will want to expand a bit more on that. So um, generally, um, LiveKit provides its uh, binaries as uh, static Go binaries or from source. And ob obviously, we want uh, the usual big button integration, which usually prov means providing uh, Debian packages, which means having a, a global default config that then can be customized um, on 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 uh, on an individual node basis in the etc. Big blue button, and basically we created a package 
um, that provides just that. And so um, already today, uh, this is available in the Big Blue Button repository for development purposes. Yeah, so uh, the next step was prototyping on audio integration. As I mentioned, uh, we need to get our foundations right, so uh, audio and video should just work, and users shouldn't really uh, have issues with it, so audio is our biggest problem right now. Uh, we have a an working integration. It's using a full SFU topology. As I mentioned, we hope that we'll improve quality a bit more. It will make it more reliable and it will probably reduce server-side CPU usage and memory usage, etc. because we won't need free switch, hopefully. Um, we also implemented an uh, initial webcam integration, so we have the same capabilities we have nowadays, uh, with, uh, with the exception of recording. And also we started some initial stress testing with the help of Danimo and Daniel Schreiber, who also provided the stress testing scripts. Uh, Pretty early stress testing, uh, no real data I wish to publish right now because there's a lot of fine tuning to do, but it shows promise. Free switch is very CPU intensive uh, and getting rid of it will probably improve things a lot. Um, and going back to that list of to do stuff, we had a while, uh, a while ago with our current media stack just by switching to live kit, we can just uh, say we implemented the majority of it. So that uh, demo I sent uh, has simulcast enabled. Uh, there's a better client-side distribution of WebRTC transports. There's H.264, VP9, or AV1 that's red enabled. It uses a full ICE implementation, which fixes the Firefox uh, incompatibility issue. Uh, a lot of reconnection improvements uh, and improved audio quality. I hope uh, no mixing. Uh, would buy free switch clicks, but this has to actually be proved with actual data, which uh, we plan to do so in the future. Um, and so for the roadmap for the near future, uh, we need to track this publicly in GitHub issues so folks on the community can actually make get a sense on how we are doing with this. Uh, we will clean our implementation up. Packaging is already integrated, as Danimo mentioned, but the client-side integration isn't. So we will clean this up and integrate it in 3.0 in an experimental fashion. So a feature behind a feature flag with instructions on how to test it. We have to implement screen sharing and recording and loads of stress testing and field trials so that we are sure it is more stable uh, than what we have right now. And for the longer term, um, if we do our jobs right, we can get rid of free switch and BB WebRTC SFU media soup and basically hundreds of thousands of uh, lines of code uh, when we can start working on uh, horizontal scalability earlier than we expected and uh, further enhancements to the audio experience. Uh, so folks have talked about volume control per user and the cone of silence experience, uh, pre and post processing filters. And we are more free to explore uh, stuff that actually benefits uh, the whole user base rather than keep uh, trying to fix uh, basic stuff. Do you have anything else? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, dial-in right now is not is not possible. This is being worked on by the LiveKit IO guys. There's an initial implementation, but it's all test-based as of this point. And um, but going forward, they plan to provide both uh, zip uh, zip trunk di um, uh, support uh, as well as dial-in support, so that you can forward it from uh, another uh, zip server. That is. Thanks.